So let's get into the third episode of Love and Hip Hop New York, season 10. All right, we're gonna get right on into this shit because y'all already know what the situation is. I gotta get through this video quick as I possibly can so it won't cut the fuck off, okay? But here we go. So we're gonna start it off with Chrissy, Miss Mo, Forever Fiance. Forever Fiance got Juju and Kimbella in the car with her, okay? She got Juju with her because of Cameron. She got um, Kimbella in the car with her. Because of Joel. So they all have a con uh, a connection with the whole Dipset thing. And Forever Fiance is just bringing them to this seminar, whatever the fuck this shit is, so she can defend herself about this whole foreclosure thing. Because of the fact that she is a realtor, she's, uh, she, she's in this business thing, and she doesn't want people to look at her a certain way because if she's taking other people's money and she ain't... You know, keeping in, keeping in close proximity about what type of what was going on with her own money, then it's gonna make her look bad, and it's gonna be bad for business. You know what I mean? So that's why she brought them with her. But in the midst of the conversation, Kim Bella decides to bring up the situation that happened with with her, Yandy, Sin, and Jonathan's ass. Okay, basically saying that. Yandy was kicking Chrissy while she was down, basically. And Forever Fiance felt some type of way about it. And she was like, you know what? I'm going to deal with this at another time. But right now, we're worrying about something that's way more important. That's my money. And that's what's going on with this. So, we're going to handle that at another time. Now, we at Hot 97. And we got Papoose in the house with that corny-ass DJ that Bianca wanted to fuck, Drewski. And we got this artist named Fresher. Now, I only know Fresher because of a song that he did with Remy Ma. Apparently, he did that same song with somebody else. I think it was 50 Cent. And because of his connection with Papoose, he got Remy Ma on the song. Apparently, Pap, that's Pap's artist. Pap trying to put music out. Remy trying to put music out. And now we got Fresher trying to put music out. And, you know, I think that he's a good rapper. You know what I mean? You know, he's typical New York type shit, you know. And um, he got bars. I mean, Pep got bars. But do I think that he's going to be something big? I don't know. I mean, look at Pep. Pep got bars and he's never been something big. I mean, Pep had one of the best verses on the Touch of Remix with Busta Rhymes. If you didn't know that Pep was on that remix, you are full of shit and you don't know shit about music. Because Pep was the shit on that motherfucking remix, okay? Everybody was the shit on that remix. Everybody. But Pep had it going on on that remix, okay? So... At this point, we're basically being introduced to Fresher at this point. And he's from the east side of Brooklyn, I believe. He got this woman that he's been with for 20 years. Is that his wife? Or is it just another forever baby mama? I don't know. But whatever. So, typical NY stuff. You got the black boy with the Mexican girl. You know, that type of stuff. Because, you know, I never realized, I'm going to be real, when I went on the east coast again this, this past summer to visit my father in Jersey, I have never seen that many Hispanic people before in my life. You know what I mean? Where I'm from, there's a bunch of black people. And you either black or you're white. That's all I see around this beach. You may have a couple of Hispanics here and there, but when I was in New Jersey, that's all I saw was Hispanics. I saw so many of them. And I'm like, damn, there's a lot of them out here. Like, really? You know? So that is, that's why it's always a great thing to go out and venture out into other places and see other things. You know what I mean? So, now we get into Erica and Safari. Now, I don't know who's shooting the video of Safari or Erica, but whatever. So, here he comes into the building, and um, Erica immediately sends Safari off to get her some pizza. They talk about the prenup. And Erica said that when if I, if you would have saw his face, like I felt so bad because I didn't even he didn't even know about the prenup and to, to hear he was like, so you didn't even tell him about the prenup, so you just gonna spring it on him? What man would want you to spring something on them like that? And that's real talk, Erica. What man would want you to want to spring something on him like that? If you really felt some type of way about the motherfucking prenup, why would you wait until y'all sitting in front of a nigga, in front of a lawyer? To do this. That's not the right time to do that. Y'all should have had that conversation before y'all went there. And now she's not even sure if she wants to do the prenup or not. Erica, you a stupid ass bitch, okay? And I've always said that you was a stupid ass bitch. So fucking stupid. You were stupid and rich and now you're stupid now. You still stupid. And you got a good man on your side. Safari don't even... I just feel like Safari don't need to be with Erica. I, but that just might be my biased ass 
that this like Erica but loves Safari. I just feel like he deserves better than that. That's just my my opinion. So we get into Jonathan. He got this new girl with this blonde hair. How you pronounce her name? Jenna Ski, whatever the fuck, however the fuck you pronounce her damn name, I'm just gonna call the bitch Ski, okay? So we get another rapper in this bitch, and I'm just sitting up here like, okay, love and hip hop. Like, we already got the OGs back. Why we have to bring this, why we gotta bring a new bitch into this, to this foe? Like, where's Samaya? You know what I mean? Ain't she back? Where's Emily B? Like, why won't she come back? Where's Tara and Amina and Peter Guns? I could've took them back. Why the fuck we got this? Where's Bianca? I could've took her back. Why we got this bitch here? But okay. So when she started rapping, I'm like, okay, you know, she all right. I prefer Cayenne and Bianca, but I like right, she good, whatever. But Rich want to manage this girl. And we already know that Rich don't know how to manage shit but his dick. And he barely knows how to manage that in his child support payment. So if this girl really believe that Rich finna be up here trying to do it, do what he needs to do or whatever. Like, do what she needs him to do for her career. She out of her fucking mind. Look at what he did for Olivia. Nothing. Look at what he did for Erica. Nothing. He can talk about what he did for Cassie and everybody else in Bad Boy, you know, 11 million years ago. It really don't mean shit. He not gonna do shit for you, baby. And that's just what it is. So, Christy got this whole press conference and shit. And I slick felt bad for her. I mean, at the end of the day, she was living in Miami. Jim knew what was up with the house. He knew it was going to foreclosure. Why the fuck didn't he tell her that got her looking like a whole fool because to be honest when she, when we first found out that she was coming back to the show i immediately thought okay forever fiance is trying to get her some motherfucking money so she can pay off this damn house that's why the fuck she coming back for after all these fucking years she ain't want to come back but she knows she need the motherfucking bread weak bread at that so she can pay this motherfucking house out because she going into foreclosure that's what the fuck she back for that's what i was thinking but the fact is, Jim didn't even tell her that shit. And she ain't, don't y'all hate it when you're wearing the shirt and the tag bothers you? That shit is fucking annoying. Shit. I'm sick of this shit. But anyway, she, you know, she, she felt some type of way about that. But everybody forgave her in this whole press conference and everything like that. Everybody took her back, so it is what it is. So, okay. So later on, Chrissy calls Jim on FaceTime. And as usual, Jim ain't concerned about this shit. Jim really don't give a fuck. He just feel like what's done is done. I didn't tell you, bitch. So get the fuck over it, motherfucker. I ain't tell you. That's how he feel. Motherfucker, I ain't tell you. You just gonna have to get your ass the fuck over it. I ain't tell you, so bitch, fuck you. That's how he taking it. And Jim don't never care about shit. He don't care about making Forever Fiance look like a goddamn fool. He been making Forever Fiance look like a damn fool for years. This bitch got on her hands and knees on all fours to give your ass a marriage proposal. Proposed to you. The bitch proposed to you. And y'all still ain't got no kids. Y'all still ain't married. And all the fuck she got to show for this foreclosed ass house that was sold at the auction for $100. If that's the case, I could have bought the motherfucking house. That bitch, like, seriously, the fair fiance, this nigga don't give not one fuck about you. He's fucking unconcerned. He don't care how the fuck he was making you look. He don't care about none of that. Fucked up. Fucked up. I, I almost feel sorry for you and your my old bitch. But it's hard to. It's hard to. Jonathan and Yandy, they go get their nails done. I wonder where A1 was. Because, you know, he loved to get his nails done, too. So, I'm pretty sure they probably invited his ass, but he just couldn't make it on time. However, they was talking about everything with Kim Bella. And um, my thing about it is, with Yandy, if I'm, I don't give a fuck how mad you are at Kim Bella. Why are you dragging her about this fight with Chrissy? We already know. She was already humiliated because Miss Mo beat her ass. We already know that. But why the fuck you got to bring it up? And why the fuck you got to embarrass the bitch with the shit? You know what I mean? Like, why you got to do, why, 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 why you gotta do that? You ain't got to do all that now. Like, real talk. You ain't got to embarrass the bitch over the shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's typical Yandy. However, Yandy really full of shit, too. Because Jonathan is also friends with Forever Fiance. So why do you got a problem with Kim Bella being friends with Forever Fiance? Is it because, because you say, Jonathan is my baby, but your baby is friends with, with Forever Fiance. So why you got a problem with Kim Bella being friends with Forever Fiance? I'm trying to understand it. Because if you could be fine with one motherfucker being friends with Forever Fiance, you could be okay with this bitch being friends with Forever Fiance. But okay, Yandy, whatever. So Erica, I'm so sick of this tag. Let's see, can I rip this motherfucker off? 
you know what? I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm so sick of this goddamn tank. However, now Erica don't want no prenup. She's sitting up there talking to Safari. Safari, after talking to Papoose about it, you know, he decided he was gonna go ahead and get Erica what the fuck she wants. But she decides that she don't want no damn, you know, prenup no more. And I'm just sitting up here like, okay, whatever, bitch, whatever. So, Ski, she sits down, she meets with, with Fresha. And um, she was saying that Rich is all about the business. I'm like, yeah, the only business that he's about is the pussy. That's what the business he's about. He's not about your career, bitch. He's about the pussy. And you're going to give it to him. Trust me and believe me. Even though they say he got a shrimp for, for whatever reason, you bitches still give him the pussy. But okay. So I was annoyed because Fresher talking about her as an image. He's not talking about her music. He keeps saying that he wants her to get her body done. Why the fuck she got to get her body done for a hit record? And that's what's wrong with bitches these days. That's why we got so many build a body bitches out here right now because of motherfuckers misogynists like you who thinks that all it's about is a fat ass and some big ass titties. Why can't it be about her motherfucking talent? Look at what you're up against. Look at how all these other girls are. They they all right, so you need to get it together. My thing about it is she ain't got to fix her body for no motherfucking body. She is okay. She got some bars. She ain't got to fix her fucking body. You just like a regular. So basically what you're showing us is that that's what these motherfucking A&Rs and these record executives do. They, they put this shit in bitches head to say, you gotta fix your body. You gotta look like this. Your nose gotta be flat like this. You gotta look like that. Your eyes gotta be squished up like a Chinese bitch. That's how you gotta look in order for you to be you know, visibly appealing to the audience. You know what I mean? And you That's why bitches have self-esteem. Bitches getting sick of ass shots. Have you not seen K. Michelle? Bitches getting sick off that shit. This is why t Boz, Left Eye, and Chili make the motherfucking song unpretty for situations like this because you are an asshole who's telling this woman that she got to get her body done just to be taken seriously in this fucking industry. Spit everywhere. But that's just how I feel. You telling her that. And that's some bullshit. Point blank period. And that shit pissed me off. You sitting up here looking like a whole damn lizard. But ain't nobody telling you to fix your goddamn self up to be in this business. So why you telling this bitch to do the same goddamn thing? <sighs> now we get to Jonathan's party. And um, Kimbella walks in. And apparently Jonathan is like, you know what I mean? I'm glad you came, even though we have our issues. And Kimbella said, well, I came to support. And then the whole article about Yandy comes up. Yandy and Chrissy comes up. And Sam was like, but I brought it up. Yandy wasn't being mad. Yes, she was. Just on up to the shit. Yes, you brought it up. But Yandy was being fucking shady. Just say that. I don't even like Fabio Fiance, but I just need for y'all to own up to the fact that the bitch was being fucking shady. She was, and she got every right to be. She don't like Fabio Fiance, so therefore she was going to drop some droplets of shade. That's what it is, and I could not be friends with Jonathan, because every time he get into it with Kimbella, he always calling her dumb. Bitch, you're dumb, okay? You're not that fucking smart, okay? Stop doing that. That... You said her IQ was like a single digit. Like, that's grounds to get your ass beat. Don't none of my friends talk to me like that. No matter how mad we may get, that's some bullshit. You don't do that. Point blank period, you don't fucking do that. And it was fucking wrong. And then Chrissy walks in. Yeah, he's still saying, I, I just wish the best for you. I never judged you. I never, Yes, the fuck you did. Yes, you did. And Chrissy coming up here like a fucking bully. She don't like when nobody talk to her a certain type of way. So... She can talk to people a certain type of way, but can't nobody talk to her a certain type of way. Okay, bitch, whatever. Chrissy kills me. You and your mo need to go on somewhere. I will fuck you up if you don't relax. Bitch, you're almost 50. Who the fuck you fucking up? Shit. Shit. Who the fuck you fucking up? You fucking them up with a cane? Okay, bitch. However, this is... I wish I could keep going, y'all. I had a lot more to say, but you know this situation here, but... At the end of the day, this is my review on Love and Hip Hop in New York. Follow me on Instagram. It will be below. My cash app is below and my PayPal is on my homepage. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And be on the lookout for my next video, which is trash yes, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Reunion. But that being said, you guys, this is my review on Love and Hip Hop in New York. I'm out of here, you guys. Till next time, peace out.